Hey guys, Vex Viewer here, and I'm here to talk about Invincible Season 2. Well, really the first four episodes because that's all we got. <laughs> yeah, let's talk about that later. In this video, I'll give you my thoughts on the first four episodes and tell you how I feel about this show so far. All right, so season two follows a lot of what happened in the comic, but it's different in a few ways. I think the show is smarter and more mature. It has more emotional resonance than the comics. Season two is still very much character driven, which is the best type of storytelling for me. And you don't have to look much further than the main character, Mark. Season two opens up with alternate Mark a mark from a different reality. So yes, we're doing multiverse stuff here as well. You just can't get away from the multiverse stuff. You just can't. We see what would happen if Mark would have accepted what his father told him. If Mark would have decided to join the Viltrumite Empire, Earth would very much be fucked. Now this visual is important because our Mark, the Mark that we know who's going to college, he's dealing with the events of season one, the trauma, in fact, Everyone in the damn show is dealing with the trauma they got from season one. So in the beginning of the season, we see Mark who is following his father's footsteps. So we see the worst case scenario and we see why he's afraid of becoming that. So it's interesting that they gave us that visual at the beginning. We see the bad version of Mark and what he could become. Mark is having a hard time accepting that he didn't know his father. Later, when he sees his father for the first time in a long time, he's upset, but first he hugs him, which makes him an interesting character. Mark loves his dad, ultimately he loves him, but he can't accept anything his father says because he doesn't want to be like him and because he beat his ass and killed a lot of innocent people, okay? Not to mention his father tricked him to show up to come save his new family. On one hand, he's a good person, has a kind heart and doesn't want to kill due to being raised by Debbie, right? And on the other hand, he feels like if he starts killing, that'll make him just like his father and send him down a dark path that he can't come back from. Really good stuff with Mark. The way this parallels real life, how many of us have had fathers or mothers that we realize when we get older that there really were pieces of shit or we find out that our parents cheated on each other and we find out that they weren't so great or they weren't so noble or pure, right? These things happen in real life all the time. Kids finding out shortcomings of their parents when they get older. This is what that parallel. Obviously it's not to the same level as finding out that your father was from a different planet and wants to take over the human race, right? But you can see where that correlates to real life, right? It's really good stuff. So at the end of the first four episodes, Mark has to save his brother. When the Voltamites show up and he can't bring himself to kill any of them, they ask him to get Earth ready for the Voltamite Empire takeover, basically. Which is a great spot to leave Mark in because he doesn't want to be like his father, but he's being tasked to step into that position that his father had, which is, I think is really good storytelling. So the question is now, what does Mark do? How does he get the earth prepared? What the hell is in his father's books? His father wants him to read the books. We'll see where that goes. But ultimately Mark's character direction and the story they're telling with Mark is very good. All right, let's move on to Debbie Grayson. Debbie's entire arc, I could be wrong about this, but I'm pretty sure it's not in the comics at all. Debbie is dealing with depression and the emotional trauma of the events of season one. She was called a pet by her husband and she's being told that she married a monster. Deep down, she still kind of misses him. Debbie has a hard time accepting that she never really knew her husband. He was living a second life. He had an alter ego, really, and she did not know. And she can't accept that. And now she's contemplating taking her own life. She joins a support group where everyone there has been affected by Omni-Man, her husband. And when one of her support group members finds out that she is in fact married to the man who killed his wife. The question he has is, how could you not know? You should have known. And she doesn't have a great answer for that. She was married to the ultimate evil in their eyes. So Debbie is going through the ringer in these four episodes. In episode four, Art Rosenbaum sets Debbie on a new path of triumph by pointing out that Omni-Man was never really around that much in the first place. Now that he's gone, he explains that she never really needed him. He also argues that Earth would have been destroyed if it wasn't for her, cause she's the one that raised Mark. And if she wasn't in Mark's life, he may have made a different decision, which is what we saw at the beginning of the series in an alternate dimension. And at the end of the four episodes, she has a new outlook. Debbie rejects Nolan and she rejects Cecil and tries to get rid of all of Nolan's stuff, like his books. So we'll see where that goes. But I really love the direction for Debbie. I thought it was great. Good stuff. 
The Maulers are always fun, good stuff. I like that they're around. Angstrom Levy, I think that's how you say his name. Um, he was only in really the first two episodes. He wanted to make a perfect utopia, but things went wrong for him when all the alternate Maulers were beating up Mark and he ended up with an enlarged brain. And now he hates Mark because he has all of the memories of the alternate versions of himself. And one of those versions hated Mark because he was there when Mark was bad in that alternate dimension. So now he hates Mark, but he's only really in the first two episodes, which is an interesting choice. I'll reserve judgment and see where they take that character later on, whenever we get the next four episodes. Boy, everyone in this damn show has a tragic backstory. I mean, this dude was actually a decent guy, but things just went bad for him. Oh well, we'll see where it goes. Alan the alien, it sucks to see how he went out, but maybe he's not actually dead. We'll see where that goes. I thought Adam Eve's story was well done. Her relationship with her father was compelling. Her father hates superheroes. She wants to be a hero. Everything she tries doesn't work out. Does she suck at this? I don't know. Maybe she just sucks at this. When she tries to fight that one bad guy at the end there to vent out her anger, she almost killed someone, that family. So things are just not going right for this chick. And you kind of feel that way for everyone in the damn show. I really don't know where this is going, but I like the direction so far for Adam Eve. Okay, so last but not least, um, I want to talk about Omni-Man, AKA Nolan. He's also dealing with his actions from season one, right? He can't go back to Earth because of what he did. He can't go back to Viltrum because of what he didn't do, right? He left his post and abandoned his mission. Now he's just kind of floating around in space. He contemplates taking his own life by approaching the star. And that is when he sees that race of insect people who need help. And he creates a new life, has a wife and a son. And that's when he tricks Mark into coming to help him save his son, his new son, which is kind of, is selfish on one hand, but at the same time, he's doing it to save the people he loves. Saving innocent people is not bad. He's still doing it selfishly in a way. He's calling his other son by lying, not caring how he's gonna feel about the situation to help him save his new family and he's not really concerned with how Mark is going to feel about the situation. It's good stuff, but it really colors the character, right? Nolan is having a crisis. He hates that he cares. He's lost. I believe the man has a good heart underneath. That's why his son and Debbie were able to overtake his Viltrumite programming, which is why I believe he was never really the cold-blooded Viltrumite to begin with. That Viltrumite culture was overtaken so easily once he had a child and had a family. I keep saying Viltrumite when I want to say Viltrumite. You know what I mean, okay? Viltrumite, Viltrumite, you know what I'm talking about, okay? Nolan cannot bring himself to say sorry to his son, which is what bothers Mark. I believe we're going to get that one day, but we'll see where that goes. We're supposed to feel conflicted when it comes to Nolan. He killed a lot of people. He beat his son mercilessly right? But supposed to feel conflicted because he's conflicted. He knows that he cares. So we care for him because of that. He tries to get his son to stop holding back because Mark has a kind soul. Ultimately, Nolan is taken out by the other Viltrumites that arrive on the planet and he is taken away to be killed. He tells Mark to read his books and that he's a good person and he wants his son to understand him. I don't know what will be in his books. Maybe there'll be secrets. Maybe we'll get the actual backstory of Nolan and how he was raised in his family. Who knows? But Nolan is a complex character, which is good. People will start to sympathize with Nolan even though they don't want to, it will happen. And that is good storytelling. So that's where we'll leave Nolan. I don't have much to say about the Guardians. Actually, they're kind of boring and they were kind of filler for these four episodes. In all, Invincible is a good show. When will we get the second half of season two? I have no idea. Will people have moved on by then? I think the show has an audience that will come back the second half of season two. All right, guys, that's it for this video. What were your thoughts on season two of Invincible so far? What did you like? What did you not like? What's your favorite character? What's your favorite character arc? Let me know in the comments. And also in the comments, let me know what else you want me to talk about. Remember to like and subscribe, and I will talk to you later. See ya.